Today we will install H2OGPT to chat with our local documents. This GitHub page has links with online demos if you want to try it out. If you scroll down, there is a one-click installer for Windows. This is the simplest way to install this. However, I had issues loading models when I installed it with this. There was an existing GitHub issue for this repository for loading models through the UI. I added a comment with the error I was getting when loading the model through the UI. I will leave a link to this GitHub issue if you want to follow along with a potential resolution at some point. There was a reply, and I was able to load some of the models by launching the UI through the command prompt, but I was not able to load the faster models from the bloke from Hugging Face. If you install this using the one-click installer and receive an error loading the base model in the UI, you can try this. Right-click on the shortcut to the application and go to Open File Location. Then right-click on this shortcut and click Properties. Copy the text that is in this target text box. And now just launch a command prompt and run that command that you copied from that text box. Now you should be able to run the base models, but I received an error when running the bloke's model from Hugging Face. Because of that, for now, I'm going to install this using their manual Windows install instructions. If you scroll down on this GitHub page, you will see the link to the Windows installation instructions. The very first step is to install Visual Studio 2022 with these individual components selected. But I already have these installed, so I will skip this step. Next, we will need to download the MinGW installer from this link. Once downloaded, launch the installer and click Install. I'm going to leave the default settings and click Continue. Once that finishes, click Continue to launch the MinGW application. Here it says to select MinGW32 Base. And this one for the GCC++. Now we must go to the Installation tab and click Apply Changes. Click Apply to install those components. Once that finishes, we can close out of this application. Next it says to install Miniconda, but I already have Anaconda installed, so I will skip this step. Then we need to add the bin folders to the path environment variable with this command. For my installation, it installed MinGW in the C directory. There is a bin folder here. I'm going to first copy the command to Notepad so I can modify it. Now I'm going to copy-paste the path to that bin folder here. I notice there is another bin folder within the MinGW32 folder. So I am also going to copy-paste this to another set command. I will need to run these two commands using a command prompt in administrator mode. Next, I already have the latest NVIDIA driver installed. Scroll down, and here are the commands to create a Conda environment. It looks like they are using Python version 3.10. Then there are some commands to verify the installation. I'm going to skip the verification commands and initialize the Conda create command with Python 3.10. Once it finishes, Activate this newly created environment and let's go on to the next step. Next, we will install CUDA Toolkit. I think I already have this installed, but I will go ahead and run this for this environment anyways. When that is done, we need to set the CUDA Home Environment variable. I'm going to do this through the Windows Environment variables. 
First, I'm going to double-check the path environment variable. On the bottom, we see the two new paths we added using the set command earlier. And for this CUDA home variable, it should be pointing to the folder path for the CUDA toolkit 11.7. If this doesn't exist for you, you can add it by clicking on the new button. For the next step, it says to install Git, but I already have that, so I will skip this. Next, let's clone the repository and go into the new folder once cloned. Then, I will skip the dependencies for CPU and instead install the dependencies for GPU. It has finished, but notice we have error messages in red regarding the version of Torch Vision. I remember seeing similar messages in the last video, but I had ignored them and it worked successfully. Similarly, I am going to ignore this and move on. Next, we will be installing bits and bytes with these commands. And now there are more dependencies. It says some of them are optional. I'm just going to go ahead and install all of them. This one gave an error message about Llama CPP Python. I couldn't figure out how to fix this, so when in doubt, ignore it and move on. Good advice. Then we will run these commands to add AutoGPTQ support. Next, we will run these commands to add XLAMA support. Then we will run these commands to install either ggmlv3 or the gguf. Oh dear, so many letters. I believe we must choose which of these we want. I will go ahead and just run all of these commands because why not? Now it says, if there were any issues, we can compile Llama CPP Python with CUDA support. We did have errors about Llama CPP Python earlier, so let's go ahead and run these commands.
and we get the same error this time. How does that saying go? Fool me once, strike one, fool me twice, strike three? I'm going to skip over this text that talks about the details and about supported file formats and so forth. We can download the Llama 2 model from this link. It says to download it and place it in the repo directory. The download is finished. Let's go ahead and move it into the project directory. Finally, we can run this command to launch the application. We get an error that says it could not load the model. I notice the model is a GGMLV3 model, according to the model name mentioned on the bottom. I believe I will need to install that dependency from earlier, because I remember installing the GGMLV3, but then right after that I also installed the one for GGUF. Let's scroll back up and install the one for GGMLV3. That is finished. Now let's try relaunching the application again. Looks like this time it worked. It gave us that strange URL at the bottom. I think that should be your local host. I'm going to copy the URL from the GitHub page. And here we are. I'm going to run one test on this real quick. I'm going to expand the upload section. I will drop a little text file that has the following three words in it. Duck, duck, goose. Now I will ask it how many ducks and geese there are. It is correct. You can test this out with different file type and options and models and settings in the UI. There is so much documentation on the FAQ and installation page for this GitHub page for how to use this. I will just leave it at that for now, as this video is already like five hours long. That is all for now. Enjoy!